Good morning and welcome to our service this morning. Our theme is Jesus the Good Shepherd. Please join in if you know the words as we prepare to worship. We have come together in, in the, the name, name of Christ, Christ to, to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. We sing together the heart of worship. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply Longing just to bring something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself is not what you have required You search much deeper within through the way things appear You're looking into my heart is going to lead us in our first reading. Good morning. Today's reading is from Acts, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, and it's about the fellowship of the believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together, and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods they gave to anyone, as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, and ate together with glad and sincere hearts 
praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we sing again, The Lord's My Shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will lead me. guides my ways in righteousness, and He anoints my head with oil, and my cup it overflows with joy. I feast on His I will trust in Jesus, and I will trust in Jesus, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will time of confession. Lord God, God we, we have sinned, sinned against you. you. We, we have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sin and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Now Howard is going to bring our second reading. Our Gospel reading comes from St John's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 1 to 18. And I'm reading the New International Version Bible. It's the Good Shepherd and His Sheep. Very truly I tell you Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from a stranger because they do not recognise the stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the father knows me and I know the father. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have told other sheep that are not of this sheepfold. I must bring them in also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This is my command I received from my father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today I wonder how close you have ever come up to sheep. Not many of us from CTL Church have grown up in farming communities, if any. And so perhaps it's a novel thing to see some sheep. I've mostly seen sheep on TV. Yes, I watch programmes like the Yorkshire Vet and other farming programmes, such as Country File. I've come across sheep on walks and in farms. Maybe you've seen sheep or even stroked them on a farm like Godston Farm, not too far away from us. What kind of picture do you have of sheep? Do you have a picture of a little lamb leaping about for joy? Or a sheep with a woolly white fleece? The reality is that if you go to farms, often their fleeces are more greyer from dirt, birds and ticks. They are very often messy, very often smelly and not particularly smart. Well, in today's Gospel passage, Jesus calls us sheep. To my mind, it's not exactly a compliment, and yet it's a good illustration because sheep are utterly dependent on the shepherd. Being in an agricultural community, sheep and shepherds were common figures in Jesus' day. Everyone listens and would have been familiar with the images that Jesus describes in this chapter. And what's more, they would grasp the deeper significance. Moses and King David were shepherds, amongst others. The language of sheep and shepherds runs deep in the Old Testament, and it was a familiar image that we could hold on to very easily. And so Jesus begins by describing not the sheep or the shepherds, but by warning them of another figure. It is the thief and the robber. The thief or robber have to sneak in 
because the sheep or the watchmen don't know them. In ancient Israel, shepherds would bring their flocks into the pen at night. By bringing them in at night, that meant that they only needed one person to guard them from predators or thieves. If you weren't the shepherd, the gatekeeper wouldn't let you in. So the only option you would have to be is to try and climb over the walls. And even if you manage to climb over the walls and get in the pen, I'm not exactly sure how you would escape and get out, what the next stage of the plan would be. The contrast with the shepherd, the gatekeeper knows him. He opens the gate for him. And not just the gatekeeper, but the sheep know the shepherd too. As I said before, sheep aren't exactly the smartest animals, but they're smart enough to know their master. Even if someone else is dressed up in the shepherd's clothes, they wouldn't come, and they certainly wouldn't come to a stranger. They only respond to the voice of the shepherd. It's because they know the shepherd, and he knows them. In verse 3, the shepherd calls them out by name. It's not that he stands there saying, come on sheep, come on. Or he says, come on sheepy. No, he knows them by name. And so he calls them out. Over here, Fluffy. Over here. Calling them by name. He knows them intimately. And so when he calls, they hear, they know, and they respond. The sheep only follow their shepherd. And this is the wonder of God's love too. He knows us. He knows us all. He knows us by name. Today, I want to ask you, do you know the Good Shepherd? Have you heard his call in your life? Have you heard Jesus speaking to you in a personal way? This is more than just the knowledge it's more than knowing Sunday school stories or being able to remember some of Jesus' words from the Bible. In the second half of chapter 10, the religious leaders came to Jesus and asked a question. They asked, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. What does Jesus say to them? He says, I've already told you. You heard Jesus' teaching. They'd heard him say that he was the bread of life, the water of life, the light. They heard this, but they hadn't believed. Not only they'd heard Jesus' words, but they'd seen signs that he'd done. If actions speak louder than words, these signs were giant shout-outs to God's kingdom, to Jesus' glory. Jesus performed these signs that they might hear, that they might know that he is in the Father and that the Father is in him. That is, they were so that they will know that Jesus is equal with the Father and that he is united with the Father in purpose and will. The signs are so that we can know that Jesus is the Son, the Son of God, but we can also know that Jesus is the way for the sheep to know. He is the one we need to get to know as the Good Shepherd. And we can go on further than this. We get the idea of the depth of relationship that we're meant to have with Jesus. As verse 14 says, I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. It's more than a simple knowledge it's deep, it's intimate knowledge and you see it's not just about hearing his words it's about receiving them, accepting them, obeying God's words it's about responding to his voice and believe me it will be no good if the sheep in the pen heard the master's voice but just stood there and didn't come running and if we understand what he calls us to why wouldn't we run why would we flock at the sound of his voice? Why would we listen to anyone else? Why would we follow anyone else? For as Jesus said, 
Those who come before him were thieves and robbers. They've got no real concern for the sheep's well-being. In a way, they're like the hired hand that we heard about in verse 12. They don't really care for the sheep. They're more interested in their own skin, their own profit, their own well-being. And now Jesus has come. He's a descendant of David, David's great, great, great grandson. He's also God the Son. He is the one who is both God and man. He is the great shepherd, the one who comes to shepherd God's sheep, to care for his people. He comes that we may have life and have it to the full. He comes so that we might have eternal life and never perish. We've got to be careful here. Jesus isn't promising that we'll have life of abundance and excess in this world. Our lives aren't full of through accumulation of goods and stuff and wealth. True life, true life is connected with God. It's a life in a right relationship with God and with each other. It's the richness of life in a relationship with God here and now and eternity with him in heaven. And notice the little in mind here that Jesus is the only way we can have this full and eternal life. He is the gate, the only entrance to it. It is uncomprehensible to some to be led and guided by someone else because that would be awkward a loss of freedom to them. The postmodern world we live in says, I should be free to choose what I want, that I can only have good life when I'm free. But Jesus says it's only through him that we can have true freedom. Verse 9 says, I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. It's through Christ that we are saved. It's only then that we have the freedom to come and go, to find pasture. He is the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Jesus is the Good Shepherd. He is the one, not only knows his sheep, but he cares for us. He cares for us immensely. He is the Shepherd who provides for our deepest needs. Do you see the surprising way he does this? In verse 11, Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. It's not the first qualification you would look for in a shepherd. Maybe you look for qualities like patience, gentleness, a good understanding of animal husbandry. It's true that shepherds in Israel needed to face predators such as bears. But the aim was to fight them off, not for the shepherds to actually lay down their lives. In fact, if they did, it would be a disaster for the sheep. There'd be no more shepherd. And the good shepherd, there'd be no more shepherds to look after them. As the good shepherd, Christ lays down his life for us. Christ died and rose again to unite us with God and with each other. He does this out of love and obedience to the Father and out of love for us. Today I want to stress a point. We are to be one flock together as CTL. We need each other. We need to look out for each other. We don't want sheep just wandering off in the dark way that they can do so. Our first reading which Mark read to us reminds us to be devoted to fellowship. Well we can't meet together personally with Covid-19 hence the reason for this video. But we can connect with each other from our own homes and come together in our Zoom prayer meetings or sharing on Facebook or in the WhatsApp group. I recognise social media is difficult for some, but we are very much to be a community of prayer and Christian love and to care for each other. We must put Christ, our leader, our Good Shepherd first. Listen to him daily. He loves us. He loves us so, so much. 
You know, it's wonderful to be a sheep of the Good Shepherd because he loves us so much. Oh, to be known and to know him intimately. To have him provide for us, to have him protect for us, to have him secure our future. To know that he holds us firm in the grasp of his hand and he loves us so much. I'll finish there with a couple of prayers. Let's pray. Lord, you are my shepherd, so I will lack nothing. You restore my soul. You lead me on the right path because it's your nature to do so. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. I thank you for equipping me with your rod and your staff so that I can be comforted. You anoint my head with oil and ensure that my cup runs over with abundance. Thank you for your goodness and mercies over my life. Lord, may I come to know you more and more as the Good Shepherd. And the prayer of St Richard, Bishop of Chichester. Thanks be to you, our Lord Jesus Christ. For all the benefits which you have given us, for all the pains and insults which you have borne for us. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Amen. We come to the point in the service where we say our creed, our statement of what we believe, which unites us with Christians throughout the world. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing again a new song called Everlasting Peace. Um, I'd just like to remind you at this point that the music is all taken from worship lyric videos and has all rights reserved.
Now Juliet is going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Good morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanks that we have the freedom and the technology to gather together this morning to meet as a church family. We thank you for your steadfast love and for your presence with us during this difficult time. We bring before you the leaders of the world. May they have wisdom and courage in their decision making. May they be working together in a spirit of openness. We pray for the scientists around the world working to create a vaccine and new treatments for COVID-19. We thank you for their skills and we ask that your Holy Spirit will give them new insight as they continue their work. We thank you for the provision of PPE that has arrived from Asia this week and we bring before you all who are caring for the sick at this time. We pray for those who are working in the NHS, in care homes and for family carers in their own homes. We pray for your love and your protection, for your peace and your blessing on them as they serve others. We also thank you for those helping to provide essential services, for those working in utilities, education, retail and public service. May they have a means to fulfil their roles in safety, free from fear. We thank you that for, the, for this week for the safe delivery of the Prime Minister's son and we bring before you all new and expectant mums and babies. We pray for their safety and their well-being and may they know your peace and protection. We pray for those sick at this time in body and mind. May they just know your healing love flowing through their lives. For those who need treatment that has perhaps been hindered by the COVID situation, we pray for timely interventions to take place to ensure that they can continue with their care. Lord, so many have lost loved ones in recent months and we bring them before you and ask for your love and comfort to surround them whilst they grieve. Be their solace and strength, particularly as many are grieving alone. Lord, we pray for those who are worried about finances, whether they be personal, business or in the charity sector. We thank you for the work of New Life Africa International and for your sustaining power to provide and guide them as they continue to care for the children. Keep them safe during this worrying time. We thank you for our church family at Christ the Lord. May we grow in love and unity even when we are physically separated. We particularly pray for the families amongst us, the parents and children juggling homeschool, work and general life together. And we pray for all of us as this lockdown continues. We ask for your grace on a daily basis to help us do all that we have to do. May your love replace loneliness. May your courage replace fear and your hope despair. May we look to you, our Heavenly Father, rather than our own circumstances. Heavenly Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, let us say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen.
This feel like dark times, but as it says at the beginning of John's Gospel, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And to remind ourselves, we're going to sing Shine Jesus Shine. final prayers. The Lord bless us and preserve us from evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.
Amen. Let Peace you. be with you as you love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship today. A few notices to bring to your attention. Firstly, on Monday we have our virtual Monday Munch on the Zoom app. That's 11 o'clock, the usual CTL signing details. If you want to know, ask more. I believe Roger and Jackie want to try and join us on the Zoom meeting for the Monday Munch. Then on Monday evening we have our prayer meeting. Well done to Simon and Emma who won the quiz last Wednesday, looking at the 80s. This Wednesday at 8 o'clock we're having our quiz again and it's going to be on children's TV. So that's 8 o'clock Wednesday for the children's TV quiz on Zoom. And on Thursday evening at 7 o'clock we've got another Zoom prayer meeting. So hopefully I can see that. Please keep in contact. Give us a call or email or whatever you like to use. Also if you'd like to do a Bible reading or prayers or even perhaps share a short testimony and you can record it, send it in and we can put it on our services. Well I hope you have a great week and many blessings.